The 15th of May 1969 5 a.m. Indianapolis, Indiana I was delivering the Indianapolis Star before school across the street from near Roberts Dairy, 4201 Millersville Road, and turned around and saw the object just floating but it had no sound and I noted no bird or insect sounds at the time as well. My dog and the neighbor's dog were both looking up at the object, which made me look up, because if not for them, I'd have never looked up or noticed the object. I saw it, three, more consecutive nights in the exact same part of the sky, just hovering and making no sound. I asked my IPS, Indianapolis Public Schools, science teacher if any meteors or fireballs had been reported that morning and she said no. The 12th of July 2001 5.59 AM Indianapolis, Indiana camping with friends and parents, Shortly before dawn, we noticed a round lighted object hovering, wobbling above the trees on the other side of the lake. It appeared to have a light source emitting from the front and possibly pointing downwards as well. Its behavior lended to the possibility that it may have been searching for something through the trees. I didn't get excited while I was watching and remained objective through the duration of the event. I would have thought it for a helicopter if it wasn't for the fact that it wasn't making any sound. The most interesting part of the event was that it disappeared at the exact instant that dawn broke. Sorry for the poor details but the event took place in the summer of 99 at a rundown state park in southern Indiana near Holiday World. In response to number 13 E we had hiked back to camp after playing in the fire heading back to our tent. Peace. The 26th of January, 2002, 4.30 p.m., Indianapolis, Indiana, driving home on a clear warm sat. Afternoon, plenty of people outside. Heading west toward College Avenue on 56th Street. Just before reaching red light, we both noticed three triangle-shaped objects flying slow and low in a southerly direction towards downtown Indianapolis. They were in tight formation. I rolled down my window to listen for noise but heard none checked my watch which showed close to 4.30 and proceeded across college. Craft were so low we lost track of where they went. At first, we both said, are they kites? It was 60 degrees out and many people were on the street, someone had to see this beside us. Sent an email to local TV channel 13 but got no response. Can't seem to get it out of our minds. Hi. I'm Rick Garrett, from Muncie, Indiana, an ID like for file a report. Saturday, June 14, 2003 time, from 640 p.m. till approx 650 p.m. there were scattered clouds, most of the weather had moved to the east at the time of the sighting. It had been cloudy and drizzling earlier in the day I was in downtown Indianapolis, approx one half mile north of Monument Circle on Meridian Street. Myself, and three others in my party, observed two cigar-shaped objects over downtown Indianapolis. They were approx 3 inches long, I really couldn't get a good frame of reference as to size, but they were approx the same size in appearance to jets that were making their approach to Indy International earlier in the day over downtown. These objects seemed to be hovering over downtown, and, after about 5 to 6 minutes hovering, they started drifting to the south, gaining altitude till they were out of sight. They did stay in formation, approx 6 feet apart in appearance, I'm not sure how to phrase that, and seemed to move in unison, dot not perfect unison, but in unison. There were four people in my part, myself, my wife, and another couple. My wife thought they were balloons of some type, the other lady thought they were paragliders, the other man had no clue, but didn't think they were balloons or paragliders. I don't think they were balloons, as they hovered for some time, neither gaining or losing altitude, before moving off to the south. I also don't think they were parasails or paragliders, as there was no pilot suspended beneath them, plus, I doubt that the FAA would allow such activity that close to Indy International. Also, for the 10 or so minutes they were in sight, I didn't note any other aircraft traffic in the area. After their objects were gone, I started seeing jets again, interesting, but could have been a coincidence the objects were black, and I couldn't note any windows or other markings. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a note. Oh, by the way, I'm a certified weather spotter, certified by the National Weather Service, and also a firefighter, EMT, so I'm used to looking for detail and, in my own mind, anyway, pretty observant. Rick Garrett yeah. Date 92303 time APX 1845 weather conditions clear with very few clouds, none indirect loss of object. 
Duration 5 to 10 seconds Location of sighting directly north of the Whiteland exit on I-65 heading north State IN distance to UFO unknown UFO size size of grain of rice held at arm's length UFO shape appeared oval from side UFO color silver, appeared to be reflecting the sun Number of witnesses myself Passenger was asleep Details of sighting I noticed the object after I passed the Whiteland exit going north on I-65 I attempted to identify it since I knew that there was an air lane from the Indy airport along there. The object did not appear to be moving. I watched it for approximately 5 to 10 seconds before I glanced down to make sure that I wasn't going to rear-end another car and when I looked up it was gone. I scanned the sky to see if I could reacquire it but there was no trace of in the entire horizon. I then checked my GPS that I have on my dash to get the bearing and time. Bearing was 344 degrees and the object was approximately 50 to 60 degrees above the horizon. I am usually pretty good at identifying aircraft and other objects from my years in the military, but this one was either too distant or something I didn't recognize as an aircraft. The 31st of May 2004 9.37 AM Indianapolis, Indiana we were coming home from the grocery store. My husband and my son were taking in the groceries through the back door of our house. I was following them with a few bags. As I was getting ready to go inside, I noticed several lights dancing on this group of clouds. I figured that they were spotlights. But there were several of them and they were moving about this way and that, in circles, in straight lines. I watched them for a while because I wanted to know what they were. I didn't see a beam of light coming from the ground like you usually see when there are spotlights. I called to my husband inside the house. He came out and observed the lights also. Then shortly after my son came outside also. Me and my son stood there amazed at the dancing lights. My husband continued to bring in the groceries and stopped to watch them once in a while. He wasn't as curious as we were. Every once in a while, when we were watching them, we would see a flash of lightning off in the distance. At least we think it was lightning. Me and my husband were looking off to the east and I saw a flash out of the corner of my eye. Later when we went inside my son told me he saw a beam of light flash. He said its color was rainbow. Me and my husband didn't see it but he did. While we were watching the spotlights dance on the clouds something else caught our attention. Then it appeared that five or six stars were moving to the west. Then a few of them stopped moving and the other few kept moving to the west. My husband thinks that maybe they just appeared to be moving because of the movement of the clouds. But I think they were moving themselves. Later I asked him and he isn't sure if they were or not. We stood outside watching them for what seemed to be about seven minutes. I was so amazed that I ran inside and called my mother on the cordless to tell her about it. I was talking to her on the phone when the spotlights slowly disappeared. The spotlights disappeared as the clouds disappeared and moved off to the northeast. I also wanted to say that this isn't the first time I have witnessed UFOs. When I was a teenager, I had a ball of light chase me and my boyfriend on a beach in Georgia. It came in off of the water, it hovered in the air. It had a beam of light that came out of the middle of it. It looked like a flashlight beam. It scanned from left to right, it acted as if it was searching for something. Sighting report. It was in 2001, March, on a clear night. Approximately 11.30. I and a fellow worker were in the guardhouse at Riley Chemical Company, talking. I stepped outside, while my friend sat down in his chair, and I started to get in the company vehicle, which was still running, when a soft popping sound caught my attention. Looking up, there hovering above the truck was an elongated shape resembling a football. I called out to Chuck to come outside for a minute, as I wanted someone other than myself to see it. Chuck stopped in the doorway and his jaw dropped. I slowly stepped to the truck directly under the object. Looking up at it I could see what appeared to be lines, very faint, I should point out, going both vertically and horizontally around the object. It was lit up with a soft glow that seemed to imitate from inside of it, almost. Like a soft white light bulb. There were no visible markings on it. I did notice that for something that big and bright it seemed to cast no shadow on the ground or the truck. After what seemed to be four or five minutes, it began to move slowly in a southerly direction, following high tension wires in the plant. It was completely quiet and made no noise as it moved. Chuck and I watched as it slowly made its way south 
through a 45-acre site, until it vanished suddenly. I might add that I have since retired from my job. And am on disability. I have a lot of questions that I would like, for someone to answer for me. I have been in the Army Security Agency, spent eight years as a special deputy for the County of Marion, State of Indiana, and have flown on numerous planes. Nowhere have I ever seen such a craft, either before or since.